Bobby back, but the difference is doing it. We're here for another one, another discard giveaway. This guy, uh, this marks number 12 in the series. We've officially spanned a full year now of me trying to learn how to do this disc dying stuff and then sharing it with all of you crazies out in the army. Both the, you know, the tutorials and the discs, I guess, since these are giveaways. <laughs> but really our goal with these giveaways has always been just to do our little part to help grow the sport. And, and, and the love affair that we have with our discs in the bag. You know, not just to share the discs in the form of the giveaways, but that feeling that I still get every time when I pick one up and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. And it's, you know, I'm just some regular schmo. I'm not a pro or pro disc dyer or anything like that. You know, you can do this. That's, that's the point of all this. You can do this. So that's what these tutorials are all about. We got a bunch that are just oots, 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 and buzz right by. And you can watch, and they're captioned, and you can pick it all up. But this one, is like one we've done before, and a few more we'll do in the future, this is, this is one of the big boys. This is a full length. All of those simple steps, you know, strung together to show you, look, I can do every one of those. I just gotta sit down and do it. That's the difference. The difference is just doing it. I've been doing this for a year now, and we're cranking out Matthew McConaughey, he meant all right, all right, all right discs that make me feel pretty awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so here's the thing. This is one of the big ones. If you're into learning how to do this disc dying stuff, strap up, strap in and get ready. Because I'm going to show you all of it. Every single thing I did to this disc. And to show you that you can do this too. You just got to, you know, have the right attitude, some patience, bang. But if you're just here for the giveaway, which is cool. Mm, we get it. You don't want to, you know, you're not going to want to sit through this. It's like 50 minutes long. <laughs> So fast forward to like 53 minutes or something like that. Whatever I talked plus 50. And then that's where I'm gonna start talking about like the giveaway instructions and how you can get your hands on this Matthew McConaughey He-Man explosion of all right. All right, that's enough of the babble. You get what I'm trying to say? Let's get into the disc die. If you're ready, <laughs> you're ready. All right, keep doing it. We'll see you soon. All right, here we go. Yeah. First step, as always, grab your cat and balls. This is your acetone. Let's clean this disc off. I know it's a fancy custom hot stamp, but this disc, courtesy of my main man X to the Z, was made for a giveaway. So we're gonna fancy it up even more. It's gonna be a little stubborn. Get in there, get a fresh cotton ball. This plastic is super tough. I'm checking to see if the acetone is, you know, burning it, so to speak, when I'm lifting it up and holding it to the light. If you keep rubbing the acetone in one spot over and over again, it's gonna start, start to like scar the plastic and burn it a little bit. That's why I keep trying to move to other locations instead of staying in the same spot the whole time. But some plastics are tougher than others, and it doesn't doesn't scar it as easily. This one is holding up really well, despite the tough stamp taking a little extra. Okay, it's clean. That wasn't easy, but got her. Let's clean the rest of it off. Even though the stamps that I'm trying to remove, you know, this is also cleaning all the oils and stuff from your hand and shipping and all that stuff off the disc as well, which makes it much more dye friendly. Now that the disc is clean, I'm going to prepare the stamp to be transferred. I mean, the uh, the stencil here to be transferred. You can't see it because I haven't weeded it out, so I'll put a picture of it up on the screen. It's, it's, it's M Matthew McConaughey in all of his He-Man glory. All right, all right, all right. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna peel just one piece out of this. 
to mark the center point. I have the graphic up on the computer in front of me on a program that shows the center point of the graphic. So I'm gonna weed out just this one little piece right here. Bang, that's all we needed because the center point is right next to it. Yeah, like right next to the curve. Now this doesn't need to be like perfectly centered because it doesn't have like a ring and it's not gonna look wobbly or off center or anything like that. But I still want it to be pretty close. And the stencil is a little too complex to weed out the whole thing before I put it on the disc. The more complex ones, it's way easier to weed it once it's on the disc. Because then it doesn't, you know, it's stuck to the disc. You're, you're getting to take advantage of the adhesive. When it's still on the backing there, the paper can move all around, it can rip, it can tear, it snags, it pulls. It's just way easier. Alright, so I'm peeling a piece of contact paper here to transfer the stencil to the disc. There she is, ready to go. I'm going to layer on here nice and smooth in an effort to not get any bubbles, leave any bubbles, in between the stencil and the, and the contact paper. Here's how I do it. I just start on the bottom and then slowly work it to the top while rubbing it down with my finger. It doesn't always work perfect, but usually it works pretty good. All right, it did work pretty good that time. And then rub that bad boy down good onto the transfer paper so that when you peel the backing here in a second, none of the vinyl peels up with the backing. You know, it sticks to the, to the transfer paper instead of sticking to the backing when we peel it. Okay, it's probably good. It's probably good. And then peel it nice and slow and intentionally you don't want to mess up the stencil okay look there you can see that one piece that I weeded out and you can see the part where it's, the little parts of his mouth are ripped I'm a little concerned about this part I may have to do some stencil repair when the time comes this is the center point right next to that little curvy thing I'm gonna try to make this upright like from the old graphic because you're still gonna be able to see a halo of it and then Get this bad boy such that, like I said, I'm not as concerned about perfectly centered. I want the whole graphic to fit in this in the ring more than anything. And then I'm using the, the nipple on that center point that I marked as sort of a reference, secondary to getting the whole stencil in the ring. All right, and then gently lay it down. And then I do this before I turn it over to help keep any bubbles that may be trapped in between the disc and the stencil now to work them to the edge because just like we didn't want bubbles in between the vinyl and the contact paper we don't want bubbles between the vinyl and the disc now so working it out from the center like this before you turn it over it helps take any bubbles that are there and get them out to the edge and it just makes them easier to work with if there are some trapped in there we want to get them all out. Alright, let's see how we do. I'm not trying to brag, but pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now the object is to rub this all down real good. We want the vinyl to be stuck real solid to the disc. And if there's any bubbles trapped in there, we want to try to work them out. We may have to use a little cut trick if we can't get them to the edge. Once you got it pretty smooth, this is the time to really rub it down good, okay? And this may seem ridiculous, but this is like the most important step to prevent bleeding with the stencil. Just rubbing it down super good and making sure that the vinyl is fully stuck to the disc. And like all the edges, that's what matters the most, it's the edges. So, like if you feel like you're rubbing it too long, you're not. These are words to live by, okay? Keep rubbing it if you feel like you're rubbing it too long. And think to yourself, this is way better than having to fix a bleed mark later on. It is. So rub it good, rub it long, and then once we've got a couple, you know, we have rubbed it down good, there should be a couple bubbles sort of isolated. Take your blade and very carefully find one of the cut lines of the stencil underneath the contact paper and then 
cut right on that line through both the vinyl and the contact paper near the bubble and then you should be able to push it out like that and ideally if we're getting it right on the line of the stencil we're not damaging it because it's already a cut line little bubble right there okay she's gone little one right there she gone and little one right here looks like that's under an A for all right Okay, all in all, we're pretty good. We're pretty smooth. It's rubbed down pretty good. And now we're gonna peel the transfer paper from off the disc. And if you fold it all the way back over against itself like this, you're way less likely to grab little pieces of vinyl and peel them up off the disc with the contact paper, which you don't want to happen, okay? You wanna do the weeding yourself by hand. If it grabs the stuff and starts weeding it out while you're peeling this, it can ruin it. Oh, it tried to it tried to weed out his eyebrows. <laughs> Stay in there. Matthew McConaughey eyebrows. Now comes the serious and arduous task of weeding out this stencil. You wouldn't really think about it, but for fancy discs like this, the patients and exercise of weeding out the stencil it's like one of the it's 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 one of the toughest parts like just painting dye on is easy <laughs> it's easy so you know start simple with stencils this is it took me months and months and months to get to the point where i could handle stuff like this kind of line art and all that and you're gonna watch it happen in super speed break in and talk about it here and there but you know go slow Cut small pieces and take your time. Patience, that's the most important part of all this. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna bring in the light that makes it a real pain in the bum bum to see. And I'm gonna get to weeding this and we'll see you guys like either when I babble or on the other side. Yeah, all right. It sucks on that camera. I'm just gonna cut that one out all together, all right? All right, I think I got it all. Honestly, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It only took like half hour, 40 minutes. I was thinking it was gonna take way longer. But there's a couple spots where the stencil kind of ripped a little bit, right here alongside the eye. That needs a little bit of touch up. And then up here in his eyeball, it pulled out the, the couple little pieces that make up like his pupil, I guess. So I gotta, I gotta fix that. I'm gonna put just a little dot or two of glue in there. Pink punk, and then one right here, punk. And then I'll, I'll fix a couple spots where the stencil ripped a little bit, right here at the top of the H, with some glue. And then we'll let it dry, and she's ready for the black. All right, here we go. I just use regular imitation Elmer's glue that I get at the dollar store. I actually, get three bottles for a dollar. Put a little bit somewhere on the stencil that you're not using. Grab your nice long skewer with a nice pointy tip and then touch her up. Oh, that was pretty good. All right, I did that. Now let's do some eyeball dots. Okay, there's one that's teeny tiny. I think I gave him like a dazed and confused kind of look. <laughs> we'll see. All right, did I get everything off? I did. Now I'll give this guy some time to dry. It's not a lot of glue, it's not gonna take too long, but you wanna make sure it's totally dry. Because if it's not, when we put the dye on, it'll mix with the glue and it'll dye that spot instead of protect it, which that's what we want. We wanna protect those spots. Some of this a little extra rub down. Okay, we'll give it some time to dry. We'll be back for the uh, for the black in a couple of minutes. We're back. The glue's dried. It's time for some black. 
I'm gonna use the Phoebe's leather dye. That's her right there. Okay, I got a new bottle right here in waiting. It might be better to show off. <clears throat> we got other options. You know, we could use the black worm dip. We could use the black eye dye. I got some of that right here. Oh no, that's blue, but you get the idea. Black, there it is. But here's why I'm gonna use the Phoebe's leather dye. Because this stuff doesn't ever fade. It's, it's because it's not a poly dye. It's a leather dye. <laughs> And it's really, it's a topical. It doesn't like become part of the plastic, but it does cure over time. And it stays, you know, it, it stays on there. I got this all over the place with this stuff for ages. But because it doesn't fade, it, it, you know, the stencil part of it looks like a stamp and it stays super crisp. That's what I love about it. I go back and forth with it, but with this one in particular, we're gonna use the leather dye. And then I'll use a mix of the eye dye and the and the worm dip for some of the other stuff along the way. But let's get into it. Let's do some black. Okay, that's two coats. Usually I do two coats when I use the Phoebings. The second coat, you probably noticed I was a little bit more liberal with the dye. That's because I gave it a look-see and saw that it wasn't bleeding at all, which is really good news. You can kind of tell on the back right there. You can also sort of hold it up to the light and it'll show you the spots where the dye's either a little thin or maybe you just miss that tiny little spot. I got a couple teeny tiny little spots, one by his butt. One by his bicep, one in this funky little thing in his stomach, oh, one up here by the sword, okay, and then there's a couple down in the letters, corner of the G, bottom of the L. All right, all right, all right. So that part's done. Now, unlike eye dye or worm dip, this stuff takes some time to dry. And beyond that, it takes a little bit of time to cure as well. But here's what I do. I put it in front of a fan and give it a good hour, hour and a half. And at that point, it's okay to work with. But you still gotta be careful because it hasn't like fully cured yet. And you can get smudges of it on your finger and then spread it around on the disc. If you really wanna be safe, give it a day or two, all right? And let it really, you know, really dry. Uh, but we'll, we'll come back in like an hour and a half or so and then we'll, we'll start to move on to what's next or whatever the hell that is. All right, yeah. Okay, we're back. The dye has dried. The next step is going to be to do the background. So the first thing I'm gonna do is peel the rest of this vinyl to expose all of the background. Okay, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but some of the adhesive was left behind here. It sucks when that happens. I'm not gonna pretend. First move you can do, get a piece of the vinyl. It's clean, just put it on it and then pull it off. And put it on and pull it off. Put it on and pull it off. And a lot of times, this can take care of it. The key is trying not to put it down over top of the part that you just dyed because you can pick up some of the dye on the adhesive and then spread it around on parts you don't want it. You really don't want it there. And that didn't totally work, so I'm gonna show you what to do next, but first I'm gonna finish peeling the rest of this. Let's see where we're at. It's messing with me over here. That worked pretty good there. Here's the other thing you can do to prevent having to do this crap. Is when you peel it, you can peel it under some like warm running water. And that'll loosen the adhesive when you're peeling it. Because it's tough to film. You know, I deal with it out here. But you can prevent this by peeling it under some warm water. I love it when this method works. Because the next one's tougher. Okay, it, it didn't totally work. 
okay? So here's what you do in this situation. This is why I keep a little goo gone here. It makes the goo gone, but here's the thing about it. This stuff can screw with the Phoebe's leather dye. So you don't want to just like errantly slop it all over the place. You want to be like intentional about it. So I'm going with a Q-tip. And what I like to do is put the Q-tip on the spot and just spin it. It's one of the best ways to kind of keep this stuff controlled. I got this one over here that I can kind of rub. But the goo gone will break the adhesive down. No question about it. And then the idea is that the Q-tip picks it up after it starts to break it down. But I'm telling you, if you over rub like where you have the Phoebings, where the black dye is, you're gonna smear it, smudge it. We're doing a pretty good job here. Okay, and there you have it. The adhesive is all gone. Now, this stuff, it kinda just like soaks into the plastic. You just gotta give it time, like 10 minutes. And then you're good to go. You can give it a rinse in the sink if you like, but I've never had a problem with it. Just letting it, it I mean, you won't, you'll won't touch the plastic in a few minutes and be like, wait, it was oily a second ago. Just kind of like soaks right in or evaporates or whatever. So we're going to give this a couple minutes, but here's the thing. I'm going to try to get everybody in on this video this time. So I'm going to do the background dye here on a live stream tonight. <laughs> You're going to love it. All right. So... I'm gonna tidy up, I'm gonna get some things ready, and then when we come back, we'll be the live stream, and we'll be doing this together, some of it. All right, rock on. Okay, we're back. This is like mildly exciting, but we got this ready to do the background dye. We're gonna try to do some kind of like fire explosion on it, but for the first time, I'm gonna try to do both the live stream and the record I got three cameras going to ones right now. It's crazy. <laughs> but we're going to try it. We'll see how it goes. Maybe it doesn't even work. And then I'm going to try to mix the live stream stuff into the, this video that you're watching right now. This is going to be nuts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in a second here, I'll press the button. We'll go live. And then bang. We'll do the background die. And I'll stop talking to you like it's just you and me. Because then everybody's going to be here. You might even be here in the live stream and be watching this right oh man this is a trip okay all right all right all right let's do this here we go hey now yeah <laughs> all right probably back from a difference is doing it hey now. oh listen you can hear me i gotta turn the volume off all right so here's the plan i'm going to try to do like a fire explosion behind this hulking he-man of a Matthew McConaughey. Let's get into some disc dyeing here. Um, I'm going to do this first one here, this Matthew McConaughey disc, with some shaving cream <clears throat> and try to stretch it out like, you know, the fire is exploding. So we'll start this the way we normally do. Oh my gosh! Everybody be on your best behavior. My mom just joined the stream for the first time ever. <laughs> That's so cool. Mom, you're the coolest. I'm telling you, everybody, best behavior. Andrew, like I said, no over the pants stuff. My mom. Okay. That's probably enough shaving cream. I don't know how many of you guys and girls are readers, but if you are, my mom's like a famous author, and you can check out some of her books. She writes historical fiction and romantic fiction. All you gotta do, go on Amazon, or any of those other places where they sell books. Search for Patricia, they make great gifts for Christmas that's coming up. I'm so excited. I got my mom and my baby sister in the stream at the same time. And all you crazies from the army in here. It's like a powder keg. <laughs> all right, back to business. That's enough of that. Let's 
this bad boy up. Okay, I think it's good. Let's put her in here. All right, even while I'm babbling, I almost got this nice and smooth and ready. Let's get some down here at the bottom. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm feeling good about this. One, last touch up, and then a spritz. And then one more spin, and she's gonna be good to go. Okay, that's good. It's nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna bring in the big bowl. All right, we got that in the big bowl. So this is fire, so we're going orange, and red, and yellow, and maybe, oh, sorry, I made it shake again. I think it's gonna make someone sick before this is over, huh? So my plan is to like yellow this bad boy up and then to kind of like do some like fire shaping with the other colors. I'm not as concerned about the shaping with the yellow. I kind of just want to like spread the yellow almost. All right, with this, I'm not trying to be as random. I'm trying to make like, you know, like curled plume kind of shapes. That's sort of my idea, at least. And this is orange right now. Okay, you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Something kind of like that in the center. All right, now I'm bringing in a little bit of red. Wipe this guy off again in between. All right, I'm gonna try to like trace around some of the orange I just did with red, lightly. Because this red, unlike the other two, the orange and the yellow, the powder's much finer. It likes to come out like in little block, in, in smaller blotchy spots, as opposed to like fanned out thin dust spray. Alright, now, I don't always do this when I have when I have the mound and the cone, but I'm going to give it a spritz of water. I want to activate some of this dye and kind of see what I'm looking at here. Right. This is pink. I'm only going to be using little bits of pink here and there. I want there to be like yellow streaks coming out from the center. So I'm putting yellow on top again in hopes that it works. But usually when you put the lighter colors on top of the darker colors, like the red that's underneath, it's the darker one that shows up. Yo, Justin's, just insane. I knew you'd make it here before we were done, big dog. Oh, look, I can't take a picture of it because all my phones are in operation. <laughs> They're being used. All right, here's where we're at. Bang. I'm gonna put Matthew up in there. Right on top, nice and soft. Don't push it, just place it. Okay, and we're gonna see how fire explosionly this one looks. Um, I'm gonna move it over here. I'm gonna set a little weight on it. I think I might use like something light for right now and then later I'll use the heavier one and then we'll jump over to do we'll try a fire explosion with a lotion swirl instead all right come on Matthew we're back <laughs> yeah. all right um, I, we'll see how I haven't cut up that live stream part yet we'll see how that goes but I'll tell you this, it was a ton of fun. All you guys that joined in and were clowning around. Even my mama came around, <laughs> which is unexpected, but cool. Um, but yeah, so we did this. Here's how the explosion came out. I'll show it to this camera up here. Okay, why not? I'll show it to this camera too, just for the halibut. Um, which is pretty cool. You know, it doesn't look exactly like fire, but it does look like, you know, kind of cartoon explosion behind the... He-Man kind of guy, so I can dig it. Um, we got basically 
two more things to do to this disc, at least, you know, as part of the, the main plan, and then it's done. We're going to do some brushwork coloring on the, the, the stencil now to kind of bring them to life, and then I'm going to give it a spin die at the end. All right, so here's what we do. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to peel the parts that I'm going to color. What I like to do is only peel the parts that I'm working on for a couple reasons. One, mistakes happen. I've dripped, I've sprayed, I've blotched, I've knocked stuff over. The longer it's protected, the better. Two, kind of helps keep me in order. Sometimes it's tough to tell which part you're working on because it's just a bunch of little black lines. This stencil is a little easier, but some of them colored in the wrong, the space the wrong color before because I kind of lost track of where the hell I was. So. Those are two good reasons. First thing I'll do is peel all of the vinyl that we're going to color yellow. And even though the disc is yellow-ish, I'm still going to do it because the yellow worm dip that I'm going to use is super UV reactive. And when you do it on top of yellow, oh look, this bad boy wants to leave some sticky behind. I'll clean that right up, clean it right up. Yeah, so even when it's yellow, I use the yellow because it's super UV reactive. And then when you turn the black light on, it really brings it to life. This vinyl is wanting to be a pain in my bum bun. I'm going to try another one, but I may, for the sake of this disc, have to take it inside and peel it under some warm water. Because I don't want to be like peeling the adhesive off twice. But if it's going to be leaving adhesive behind the whole time, for the sake of the disc. Yeah, look, it's doing it again here. Here's the, you're, you're just not gonna get to watch this part. And even though I said, I have to peel the part that I'm working on, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna peel the whole thing. I'm gonna do it under some warm water. I'll get it done. Here's what it's gonna look like. Me just peeling this vinyl off. So as far as like the tutorial portion of this, you're not gonna miss much kind of boring anyway it looks cool when it goes really fast but all right so we'll be back should be nice and clean see you then okay I got it all peeled off the hot water helped and you know there's tiny little bits of bleeding here and there like in between the thin parts of the letters but all in all I mean that stencil came out pretty good right I'm pretty excited about it I'm gonna have to make one of these discs for myself when I'm done. All right, let's get on to what we are starting with here, which is we're gonna do some of the coloring. I'm gonna do it with brushwork because there's gonna be so many different colors. All right, so we got <clears throat> three parts that we're gonna do in yellow. We're gonna do his hair. We're gonna do the big all rat in the middle, and we're gonna try to do this tiny little all rats. When I do this yellow, chartreuse, according to Worm Dip, because it's so UV reactive, I like to use the black light while I'm putting it on, because then it like really shows up well. Here's the thing when you're doing this, and if you've watched any of our other videos, you've heard me say this before, but when you're putting, when you're doing this brushwork, you, you wanna be super careful not to go over the already dyed black parts because the acetone that's in the mix here it will chew up <clears throat> it will chew up the uh the feebing's leather dye and then it'll smear it all over the place and you'll hate it so you just want to be like real patient and cautious and go slow and then one thing you can do is, is when you're, because inevitably you're going to hit a little bit of the black and it's going to drag and smear some of it. So once you're done with the yellow, and I'll do this in a little bit, you can get like just a little cap full of just pure acetone and then go over the part you just did and it'll clean up some of those streaks. For the sake of time and my own sanity so I can put the music back on, I'm going to break into super speed here. For a little while and we're gonna bust out some yellow okay so 
So one thing I'm doing on these tiny little letters, after you know trying to drain the tip of my brush on the container, I'm drying some of it off on the cardboard that I've wrapped this table in because I don't want too much dye on the tip of the brush. That first spot that you touch, especially if you're just using the tip of the brush, it leaves a tiny little pool. And that tiny little pool, you know, if it overlaps into the edge of like the black of one of the letters, screws it all up, so soaks it in. So I'm bringing like a, a relatively dry brush to the disc when I'm doing these tiny little spots. Okay, that's it for the yellow. I accidentally dyed one little part of his face right here that I wasn't supposed to. I'll try to thin that out a little with some acetone and then cover it up with the skin color dye later on. But the next thing I'm gonna do is to try to clean up just a little bit of some of those spots where I dragged a just a hair of the black into the yellow. And you know, you don't need to do this. I don't either. It's just you know, my OCD tendency shining through in the disc. So I pour a little 100% acetone into a cup. I'm using the same brush, the yellow, and then I'm just going to go over some of the sections. Look, I got way too much in the brush. Over some of the sections that I already did. And you know, this time being super careful not to hit the outside lines because just the pure acetone All right, that little cleanup technique works surprisingly well. It amazes me every time how much of the, you know, blackish streaks it pulls out and the rest of, you know, the yellow it just leaves there. Nice. All right, now let's see what color we're gonna move on to next. How about the orange? I just got this orange. It's a new color in the arsenal. Switching it up. I'm doing red instead. I like that way better already. In the picture I have here, it's orange. It's 100% orange. Even my colorblind eyes can see that. But I'm taking a little bit of artistic liberty with this. Masters of the Universe font. Okay, it's gonna take a good long bit for this to get done, so I'll kick her into super speed. You know what I might try here? So I don't have to burn out this light. It's gonna work. P-O-P-P-N, no info for the D-E-N, federal agents mad cause I'm flagrant to tap myself and my phone in the basement. Triple beam, lyrical dream, I be that. Okay, that's the red. A tiny little outline around the letters, that wasn't easy. In fact, it was difficult. I'll let this breathe for a minute or two. Pop into a quick lunch break. And then, let's circle back and do some more. Bang. Okay, let's do some more of the colors here. What I'm going to do is belt in black. And then I'm going to try the sword on. Actually, this section in here is in black in his t-shirt too, around what looks like a shark to me. So I'll do those with this black. It'll look different than the other black, which is kind of cool. And then we'll do his sword. His pants are khaki. I'm just gonna do those in like a green-ish. <laughs> and then really all we're left with is the skin. And that's it for the coloring. So we'll buzz through some more of this. Okay, here's the black. Let's do his pants real quick. Okay, I 
can dig how the pants came out. They definitely are different than everything else. It's close to khaki. I like it. Now, the sword is really the only thing in the whole picture that has any like indication of light. <laughs> it's two toned, you know, two shades. So I'm gonna do it in, in both silver and gunmetal. But uh, we want the top to be lighter than the bottom. <clears throat> I have this silver glass vial here. It had some old silver eye dye in it. There was still some acetone in there, but I poured a little more in there just to kind of freshen it back up. I'm gonna shake it up real good. Now, it, it, it's, if it's not mixing well, which this one did mix pretty well, you would see like gritty pieces of it all through it. Just try holding it over a candle for a minute. Make sure the lid's on real tight because this stuff will go right up. <laughs> right up. It's super flammable. But if you heat it up, it mixes way better. Oh no! Look! The damn thing! It shook all over. I gotta fix it. Oh, this one is gonna be tough. I didn't get any acetone. Oh man, that sucks! Okay, may have saved this by getting on fast enough. I'm really only concerned about the part that's on his skin. The other part, I'll blend in as I color the sword. But I don't want a big gray blotch in his bicep. Son of a biscuit eater. Son of a biscuit eater. All right, what did we learn there? Two things. One, make sure the lid's on real tight before you shake this damn thing. And maybe don't shake it over your disc. Look, as I started shaking it again, look at that, all over my hand. It's, this the silver, shaking. All shooken up. Not shaking it anymore. Oh, here's the other thing we learned. You can save it. Get on the acetone right quick. I got this one. Down here, which there's a faint memory of that you'll never even notice, uh, with acetone and a cotton ball, and then acetone and a Q-tip up here to kind of save this. All right, which one is this again? Silver. Silver's gonna be. Silver's gonna be the top, the lighter part. You know what would have been awesome here when that drip happened if I didn't have to peel all the vinyl earlier because of the daggone adhesive. And then that spot would have been protected. And just like I was talking about, that drip from just shaking the damn thing up. <laughs> That's all I was doing. That would have been, the, the bicep part would have been protected. You know, where it's at on the sword, like I said, we're gonna be able to cover that, no problem. Just like we kind of did up on the top half here. I'm, I'm hoping that the skin color allows me to blend that in. But you see what I'm talking about, about only peeling the vinyl that you need to when you need to. Safety third. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to gunmetal for the bottom half. And when I mix it, I'm shaking it way over here. Okay, sword's a little darker than I wanted, but I can still dig it. All we got left to do for coloring now is the skin, which I got this little bottle here marked skin. It looks a lot darker than at least Caucasia, but believe it or not, that's how it comes out. It took me a while to find that mix right there, but it's a delicate balance of pink, yellow, and a pinch of brown. So play with it until you find it yourself. I think I'm gonna add a touch of acetone thin it out a little. Give that a little who's your daddy. Yeah, it's gonna work. Okay, that's the skin. Pretty happy with how that came out. It is a little more orangish, like in a He-Man kind of way <laughs> in the picture, but for sure it came out a different tone 
than the shirt, which is really what we were going for. It doesn't need to be perfect. Now, I think I'm just gonna give two tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny little blue dots in his eyes. All right, I'm bringing this in just for, for seeing better. One of his eyes looks a little stoner. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> But I guess that kind of fits the character. Okay, so that is all of the coloring. That's what he's gonna look like. Pretty cool, I can dig it. Now I'm gonna do a little glue masking on this to protect the stencil from the spin die. Which, not too much, I don't wanna do a thick one on here. None of the rest of this went outside that line. So all I need to glue is these two little corners here and then let this glue dry and then we'll give it a spin die and this bad boy I'm all done. All right, all right, all right. Okay, now I'm gonna get my big long McPoker tin here and I'm gonna push this glue right, not to the edge of the stencil, but just past it. I mean like a, like a hair past it, a millimeter. Because I like having just that tiny, little separation of negative space between the graphic and the spin die. I've done it both ways, where I've glued it right to the edge and just past the edge. It's just a personal preference thing. I think personally, it looks cooler. Helps make the graphic pop. Okay, here's one of the reasons why I recommend a long skewer as opposed to a toothpick. It helps you keep your hand away from the disc, and then you're not accidentally <laughs> smotting it in glue, which I've done, and it sucks. Especially when it's a part that you already like, just touched up. <laughs> but skewer, better than toothpick. Okay, that's good, that's all it's gonna need. We'll let this dry, and then we'll come back and spin dye it, and then bang, we did it. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, we're back. The glue is dried fully. I got the disc all centered up here on the turntable. And it's time to give it a spin. This is always one of my favorite parts. So I'm gonna go with some of the colors that are already in the disc. So I'm gonna need the red. I'm gonna need the yellow. We'll use some black to frame some things in. Let's just start with that. Let's see what happens. Now, I got this glue circle on here that's marking like stay inside this or you'll mess things up. Really, I don't, I'm not gonna get too close to it. I wanna stay relatively close to the edge of the rim. Look at that, it didn't even touch the damn stencil. Really, I could have got away with not gluing it. But, better safe than sorry, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna tell you one thing that I kinda suck at when it comes to spin dyeing. It's fades. So, I'm gonna try to fade from the top out on this one. I've tried a couple different techniques, all of which have only kinda worked. but I can never get the fades to look anywhere near as good as the guy who donated this disc for the giveaway, X to the Z, who spins brilliant fades. Not the worst I've ever done. I'm gonna to still touch it up with the acetone. It actually isn't looking terrible. It's taking a long time. I got all the time. <laughs> I got plenty of time. No, but it's actually coming out. Okay. Kind of happy with that. I don't say that too often after trying to do a fade. 
here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pour a little bit of straight acetone in here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna just try to blend it through and take some of the stripes out of it. Just drag some of that red down to the bottom of the face. I can dig it. That's one of the better fades I've done, not to toot my horn. Here's one thing I like to do when I do a fade, is to do a real pencil thin black pinstripe at the top of the dark side. The dark side. So I'm gonna put one right here. A little thicker than I wanted it, but I can still dig it. I'm gonna do a black line on this side to kind of close it off. It's tough with these mid-range discs because they curl over to the edge. And it can be super difficult to spin on the edge because you want your brush to be perpendicular to the plastic when it goes on. Otherwise, it slips in one direction or the other. Flip, flip. And then your line gets all screwed up. So that's why I'm kind of coming at the disc sideways with this one line as opposed to over the top and I'm being like extra careful once the brush is touching not to like push too much harder and give it that like tension it needs to flip or flop one way or the other just trying to get it on there make my line and get out of there plan was to instead of fade this side do a couple red pinstripes I think I'm still gonna stick with that it's a tight pin I want to do three of them here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna squeeze some yellow in Okay, I think that's our spin back. It's the first one I've ever done that looks like that. They sort of come together, you know, when they come together, <laughs> as they come together. Alright, now the next thing we have to do is peel the glue. And then after that, we got a Matthew McConaughey and all of his He-Man glory disc ready to go. that's it I mean it looks pretty done <laughs> pretty awesome I'll show it to this camera here what do you think of that see how it looks for this camera probably better lighting it came out pretty dope I'm excited about it I hope you guys are you know I'll figure out how we're gonna do the giveaway and stuff and then you'll probably see me after the screen does like something like this and then I'll tell you all about it <laughs> <laughs> keep doing it guys hope you can dig it and that you learned something and we'll catch you soon yeah Woo! that was a doozy huh for those of you that sat through that I gotta tell you you're my kind of people alright because I can tell you're trying to do it if you do it if you try to crank out one of these or your own discs and that kind of stuff pretty please Send some pictures of them to us. We want to hear all about it. Let us know in the comments. Hit us up on Facebook. Mm, you're our kind of people. We're trying to get, you know, we're trying to gather all those types of people together and do some stuff together. All right, so I hope you dug it. Hope you learned some stuff. But let's get right down to business and what everybody else who has fast forwarded to this point is here for and along with you. Okay? It's instructions on how to get this Matthew McConaughey disc. All right, all right, all right. Off my hands and into yours. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? There's only three things you have to do. One thing we really, really want you to do, okay? Three things. First, this is for the subscribers for our YouTube channel. That's, you know, makes sense, right? So be one of those. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the little button. You're in. Number two, so the other people can get in on this, 
It helps with YouTube if you like the video. Because then they like bump it up and all that. I don't know how the algorithms work, but subscribe, like the video. Okay, three, drop a comment down below. You can comment whatever you want. I don't care what you say. As long as it's like at least PG-13. We're trying to keep things like PG-13 around here. Andrew? Okay. Put a comment down below, somewhere in the comment. Put hashtag T Diddy and then space and then choose a number between one and a thousand and put it after that space. I try to explain that a different way every time so that people don't mess it up. I don't know why it's so hard, but I'm going to do it again. Hashtag T Diddy space, choose a number between one and a thousand, put it after that space. Okay? So like for mine, it would be like hashtag T Diddy space six. That's what I pick, number six. Okay. And then put that in the comments. Bang. One, two, three. Those are the things you have to do. Now you're in. Here's the thing we want you to do. Like we said, we're trying to grow this thing. Mm. Share this with all your Huff Buddies. There's all sorts of ways you can share it. You can hit the share friendly button right below me. Right down there. It's on the YouTube thing. They give you all sorts of options how to share it. I'm going to put a post with this picture on there on our Facebook page. Dude, share that all over the face place. All over the face place. When you're out at the course, just tell your buddies, yo, those T Diddy guys got a pretty dope disc giveaway going on. You should check it out. However you do it, share it with your Huck buddies, and then we're gonna make this thing grow. That's how we're gonna do it. You have to talk about it more, and then that's it. So like three things you have to do, and then that one thing, honor system or guilt or whatever motivates you, share on, and then you're in there. So in two weeks, ish, I'm gonna tack on a couple extra days. That that takes us to. October 13th, Sunday, October 13th, 12 midnight, bang, Eastern Standard Time, I close the polls down. That's it, everybody else is out. And then I'm gonna wake up the next morning and I'm gonna go to the thing and I'm gonna press the buttons and brrr, it'll pick a number and bang, that's the winner. Could be you. <laughs> and then I'm gonna send this right to that person. And that's how we do it. And you win. There you go. Full year of this crap. Do you believe we got in this far? <laughs> All right, that's it guys. I hope you had a good time. Look, I'm supposed to tell you about what's coming next. I'm working on the supply video. I'm gonna go over all the supplies and the box and everything. And soon there's gonna be a results video, like in two weeks. So there's some stuff that's upcoming. We're pretty official. Whew. I love it. I hope you guys had a good time. All right, you know what to do between now and when I see you next. Keep doing it. We'll see you soon, guys. Oh, no.